Hi, this is Lena. And this is Cami. We're here with Josh Summer, co-founder of the Cordoma Foundation. So Josh, why don't you give us a quick introduction to your work with Cordoma Foundation? Absolutely. So I was diagnosed with Cordoma, which is a rare form of bone cancer, during my freshman year at Duke. And uh, after I got my diagnosis, it turns out uh, that, that the average survival for Cordoma patients was seven years, and there was no effective therapy uh, for the most part beyond surgery. And so I basically uh, refused to accept those statistics and became determined to do everything possible to try to find a cure or at least treatments that may be able to help me and, and others that are facing a similar situation. And so, uh, as I guess luck would have it, turns out the only federally funded cordoma researcher in the entire country happened to be here at Duke. And so after my diagnosis, I started working in his lab, and uh, ultimately that kind of uh, blossomed and mushroomed into something much larger. My mother and I started the Cordoma Foundation to lead a coordinated international research effort involving researchers uh, all over the world uh, from multiple different specialties. And what we do is basically serve as a bridge between different researchers who ordinarily wouldn't work together uh, to coordinate research, uh, to break down the obstacles that stand in the way of research, and to make sure that everyone's working on the same page towards this common set of goals and that they have the resources that they need to make quick progress and ultimately find a cure in time to save the lives of patients who are dealing with this disease today. Okay, that's, um, that's great because it kind of follows up into our next question is, what does scale mean to you, and how do you, how do you reach scale when you are serving a population with a rare disease? You mentioned you would be, when you aggregate all the different rare diseases, it's a huge number. So do you see um, the Cordoma Foundation as offering a kind of business model solution or a model solution to kind of pull everyone together? Well, a couple of things to that point. Um, first of all, we are in this kind of constant um, dance where we try to remain focused on our mission, which is curing Cordoma, uh, and yet also try to keep the big picture in mind and, and try as much as possible to uh, make sure that what we do uh, uh, could potentially translate to other diseases as well. And I would say that a lot of what we're doing is just assembling uh, best practices from other organizations, and, and really um, we, we are, have been very lucky to be able to stand on the shoulders of giants, so to speak. I mean, there are a lot of organizations that have blazed the path that we're following. I would say what's really um, uh, unique in, in the rare cancer world, uh, what we're doing, is, is really taking a big picture approach and, and thinking about the entire process of curing the disease from A to Z. Um, and so to your point about scaling, it becomes difficult to scale because um, time, manpower, specifically uh, my, my time and my mother's time, uh, have become rate limiting factors. For the scale, do you define your goals by kind of people reached or the number of researchers involved in, in working on this, or how big is big enough? That's a really great question. Um, we, I don't know, I, I can't say what the optimal size of, let's say, the Cordoma research community is. I would say that, that when we started this, um, there were only a handful of researchers who were actively studying Cordoma, and that was certainly not enough. Um, I don't think we need thousands. I think if we're strategic about it, um, having a community of several dozen or you know a hundred active Cordoma researchers can make a lot of progress. And then, the, and then you know the really the big rate limiting factor becomes funding. Okay. Well, since funding is such an important part of making everything work, what is your funding strategy like? Do you take a different approach? Um, and especially since you're working with a rare disease that a lot of people have not heard of, what is the marketing that is required with that? That's a really great point. So I would say our funding sources are, are, are pretty diversified. The biggest source is from patients and their family members. I mean, ultimately patients are the ones who have the most to gain and the most to lose and, and who are the biggest stakeholders in, in the treatment development process. Um, but we do also make the point that what we're, the problems we're solving and, and uh, the goals that we're trying to achieve are bigger than Cordoma. And so uh, a good chunk of our donors have been people who realize that there is potential benefit beyond Cordoma here, people who are um, uh, convinced that our model of finding treatments uh, for rare cancers in an uh, effective manner that maximizes resources is actually a stepping stone to the kind of personalized medicine that many in, in, in medicine right now uh, realize is kind of the, the, uh, the next step in, in, in uh, the, the progression of, of, uh, of medicine. Um, and so, so 
you know, ultimately all cancers on a molecular level are rare. And so if we can't develop treatments for a rare cancer like Cordoma that affects 300 patients, how are we going to develop treatments for, you know, your aunt's breast cancer that it is a rare variant that affects three or 400 patients a year, or your father's, you know, prostate cancer that is a rare variant. And so um, we, we really try to make the pitch that what we learned from Cordoma uh, can be translated to other diseases and vice versa, um, and, and that the return on investment uh, by investing in, in our approach to uh, energizing the research and, and catalyzing the research uh, will have really far-reaching impact. And, and also, just one, um, one follow-on to that is that um, within a year, two of the researchers that we've funded have actually gone on, we, we've given them small seed funding, and they've actually gone on uh, to get much larger federal funding based on the research that they were able to do with, with the small seed funding. So there's huge uh, return on investment there.